So good afternoon, everyone. I'm so honored to be here today, share with some ideas in relating topic. Uh, I just mentioned globalization. As you know that, it's a big you know, topic. It's huge. I believe you guys must enjoy very much the talk about poem, right? Yeah, by the uh, professor speaker. Were you guys here? OK. He is a very smart guy. He is my uh, colleague, Professor Kang Zhen, and also my good friend. Okay, he is a guy who is look at you know look at the stars in the sky, but we have to back to the ground. There's a lot of problems, a lot of issues. You know, sometimes it's more important. He talk about Tang Dynasty, Song Dynasty, but we have to talk about the current challenges. We face serious challenges now. One of the areas is globalization. Face a huge challenge. So I'm going to share with you guys some of the views in relating to this issue. Okay? So I tried to start with you know, the issue because it's huge, you know, very wide topic. Starting with so what's happened to globalization now? Because there's so many phenomena, a lot of phenomena. So people don't understand. Okay, okay, so some people don't understand what's happened to some of the phenomena, for example, why UK, British people, okay, quit from European Union, EU, after so many years, which is very difficult to build up EU, you know, by so many countries over the past years. Why EU quit from you know, EU, and then why U.S. refused to sign, as you know that, the Paris Agreement. Paris Agreement is extremely important for human being, for mankind, because it's, you know, relating to climate change, right? This is a serious issue. Without, uh, you know, signing this kind of agreement, there will be serious challenge in the future because of the CO2 emission, right? and then cause the increase of the temperature by three degrees, four degrees, after four degrees, so that's a big trouble. You know, very soon, 30 years later, 40 years later, so the temperature will be increased, and the Earth will be sink into the sea. So that will be the end of the Earth, maybe the end of the human being. Why U.S. refused to sign this is so important agreement? So this is why so many countries strongly against this kind of, you know, mentality or this kind of behavior, right? U.S. also quit from TPP, right? The, the PP, uh, P, TPP, right? You know that. And also, U.S. quit from UNESCO. One of very important international organizations of United Nations system in charge of education, cultural, science development. U.S. also quit. U.S. was to quit, you know, from the deal, nuclear deal with Iran. This was also, you know, a serious issue, big issue. He is an expert in this regard, you know. So, and currently, U.S. also launched a trade war with China, with Russia, with the EU, with Canada, with so many countries. So what's happened to the world? Why U.S. do this? So this is very clearly the change direction from multilateralism to bilateralism. Trump, you know, President Trump said, you know, I'm still go along the, you know, it's a part of globalization. It's also the globalization because I focus on bilateral relations. Bilateral relations, not multilateral relations, right? Because, you know, I try to make a U.S. Great again. We have to focus on our country itself. So that's the idea from him, right? This is one attitude, which is everybody knows that right now, what's been happening. But on the other hand, we also find that so many countries are working, still working very hard to push forward the globalization. For example, China. China working very hard, you know, pushing globalization. One of the examples is China launched the initiative 
of the Belt and Road, okay? Belt and Road Initiative. This is a very important platform to push forward globalization. Based on this platform, China tried to you know, improve your know, globalization, make globalization faster. Because China knows very well, without globalization, underdeveloped countries will be disaster. There will be no bright future. China already have, what happened to China? Without globalization, China will, will not have such a good life now. You know, globalization saved China from certain extent. I know very clearly, because I entered into the university, you know, exactly the same year China announced the reform and open policy in the later of 1970s. So in 1970s, 1980s, in the end of 1980s, China's GDP per capita, only 150 you know, US dollar. GDP per capita, 150, 150. Much less, less than one third of the GDP per capita of the poorest African countries. At that time, you know, in Sahara, you know, South Sahara, you know, desert. African countries, their GDP per capita was nearly about 500 you know, US dollar. So we're much, much less than, than in, uh, you know, the poorest country in African countries. So why huge change have been happened? Because of two things, as you know, everybody knows that. Reforms and the opening up. You know, from a certain extent, I, my understanding is that, you know, opening up is more, much, much more important than reforms. China benefits not from globalization, not from globalization. But China benefits not from its opening to the world. China benefits a lot from integration into the global system. So this is why China working very hard to push globalization, go on. Without globalization, the current underdeveloped countries, there will be no hope. No hope. There's, there's no doubts. You know, if you read the book, I edited several books in the market. You can buy it. I didn't find it. I just checked. You ran out there, very unfortunately. But a very good book. But this, uh, you know, not any, any of the books, you know, not, none of the books you know, dis displayed here. So that's pity, you know. Africa 2050, Asia 2050, North America 2040, Central Asia 20, 2050. It's a very good book, right? This is, a, I, you know, working with my students together, translated the, uh, you know, the works written by a group of experts worldwide, you know, published initially by English, and then, you know, our group translated into Chinese. The Chinese, uh, you know, the chief editors, you know, is me. So this, based on this kind of a research, with globalization, there will be no poverty. By the year 2050, there's no poverty. Every country will be a rich country. Everyone will be rich at that time. But with the precondition, globalization. If anyone stops globalization, so that will be no hope. All this kind of scenario, positive scenario, will be gone, will be disappeared. So this is why globalization is extremely important. Because of China, China, you know, understand very well. Chinese people understand very well. Chinese intellectuals like us, you know, we have been passed through this period of the time of the reforms and the opening up. We know the importance of China's integration into the global system, okay? And this is why we invite underdeveloped countries to also join us to integrate it together into the global system. In the end, everybody will benefit. Otherwise, so that will be the disaster for the underdevelopment, you know, developing countries. There's no hope. You know, this is based on the research, okay? This is based on the research. So, regarding the argument about globalization, because we're always talking about globalization, so the basic question is, what is globalization? How globalization is defined in the simplest way? Make it simple, not so complicated. Based on my, uh, you know, my research, use one word 
to understanding globalization. Maybe it's not uh, you know, precisely correct or generally correct. I believe integration. If you understand the one word in relating to globalization, what is globalization? How globalization is defined based on my understanding is integration. Integration of you know, any country into the global system. In the regional system, on different levels, and these two levels, why is it in the regional level? So we're talking, this is why many people are talking about the regional integration, right? But a bigger, you know, general sense is the global integration. So all the countries integrated into one global system. And then everybody get rich. You know, this is clear. This has been showed by the experience over the past many years, after, particularly after the Second World War. Right? So this uh, the first point I want, I want to mention. 